All right. So go back and uh, recap on the statement metrics. So um, make sure you understand what is how to come to this this form, uh, matrix form, by looking at this uh, beam structure. So this element, we have force, we have uh, vertical loading, and then we have a sh uh, displacement in y direction. We have moment and we have rotation in each point, point one and point two. And then we convert the beam structure into uh, moment and shear loading uh, diagram. This capital V is shear load, shear force. Yeah, this is a shear force. So, and then this is what we assume the moment will be from this diagram. Yeah, we convert from the top to bottom. So we assume that the moment, the big M, is in coupled form, which is one is clockwise, one is ended clockwise, one going up, one going down, so that we have an equilibrium system in the shear load or shear force diagram. Make sure you go and understand uh, that we're doing some transformation over here. And then um, remember the structure of the state matrix for one element. Right? So you have EI over L cube, and then you have all the uh, standard number over here. Okay? All right. Then we go through one example of uh, assembly of the beam matrix. So uh, we always start with numbering. When we do with PIM problem, we start with um, numbering the node and the element. So we number one, two, and three. After that, we label the element. So we break this structure or this beam structure into two elements. So element one, we circle it. Element two, we circle it. Huh? This is uh, very, very near to the, if you use NC software, it's very near to the meshing approach, which means we have one element and then we break the element into two elements, right? So we have two meshing. Uh, after the meshing, uh, we do, we have, we have seen two elements in our calculation. Then after that, we look at the system. So after we done, labeling one, two, three, and then the element one and two. After that, what we do is that we look at single element, element one, element two, we write the stiffness matrix, yeah? So for element one, we write the stiffness matrix, the standard one, and then we have labeling one above the K here to represent element one. We repeat the same for element two, yeah? So what we differentiate the notation is that we write number two above the K here. Um, just take note that uh, for element one, what you see in the steam matrix here, it refer to point one and point two. So this group is referred to point one, this group refer to point two. For element two, you are connecting point two and point three. So what you see here is Point two and point three element. Uh, point two and point three information. So it's like a parking lot. So make sure you know what is the meaning inside the steam the matrix over here. Okay. So again, you when you write the steam the matrix, you need to look at the diagram that you draw on your answer, and then you look at the element one. What are the point number? Okay. Point two uh, or element two. What are the point that uh, that connected or on the element number two? Okay. So after that, we have single element one, single element two. We combine these two simple matrix into one very big uh, uh, global mat matrix, or we call it uh, yeah, global matrix. So make sure you know how to put in all these number into how to combine all this number. Before you combine, make sure the constant value outside the matrix will be 
are the same. Huh? The constant value outside the matrix, same, then only you can uh, put them together. Okay, on the slide here, I will show you directly the answer. So um, on your side, you should know or go and practice how to transport all these little or all this sing single element here into very big uh, global matrix. So we still look at F equal to KD form, a matrix form. So on the left, you have the force and moment. And then the stiffness matrix here is a combination of uh, these two. All right. So you have to know how to transport her uh, into here. So and then on the uh, far right here is your displacement. Uh, this is your displacement. So in this case, we will have uh, your vertical displacement at point one with rotation one, vertical displacement at point number two with rotation, vertical displacement going up with uh, rotation also. So make sure you know how to do all these. Yeah? Okay. So this slide is, is, is the basic or fundamental for beam analysis. Then after that, after you combine the uh, stiffness matrix, what you do is that you apply the bounding condition. Okay, Again, same with the NC software. After you do for the meshing, you have to define the bounding condition. So bounding condition, you look at the structure. So point one, what are the force over there? or what are the constraints over there. So if you look at point one, if you have a structure that inside a wall, so you don't have any movement here, you don't have any rotation over here. So this one will be zero, this one will be zero. And then point number three, point number three is a pin pin, uh, pin constraint or it's a pin, pin end where it can still rotate. Yeah, point number three still can rotate but it's not able to go up. So V3 or your vertical displacement will be zero, but there's a number there. There's a number for your rotation. Okay. So after that, you look at the bound. Okay. In the my previous slides, there is a error there. Yeah. There's an error there. Katana, can you spot the error? Pardon? Can you spot the error? There's a typo error in my slides here. Is it about the fixed hinged? There's one number that I typed wrong. Can you spot it? Is it for the for the force? No. Lai, can you spot the error, the typo error in these slides? There's one number that I typed wrong, or there's one notation that I put wrong. The hint is that when you put inside the individual element, check the individual element. Do I type, do I put in correctly or not? Sing over here. Sing is still not here. Okay. This is element one. This is element two. Can you spot? 
Okay, both of you spot this one typo error that I typed wrongly in this matrix. Uh, see the 6L plus 6L. Now, why minus they sir? 2L minus 12 for 2L squared. Why there is a 6L plus XL? Oh, uh, it's supposed to be minus. Is it? What? What minus? Oh. Which one? Which one you're referring to, Katana? Which number you're uh, referring to? Which the, row? And which column? Right. Which Which row? Which row? Uh, which column? Uh, fourth row. Fourth row, okay. Fourth row. Which uh, column? Ah, uh, which uh, which column? Column three. Column three. Ah, uh, okay. What 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 is what is wrong? Uh, is it supposed to be minus six L minus six L to the plus? Are you sure? No. Do no. you both of but, you know how to combine these two or not? Do you know two. how to write this these two elements into this metric or not? I know because uh, if there is a if there is v two and v two, then you have to add them, right? For that particular part. Yeah, you just you just put them in there. So what's wrong if this is v one rotation one? V2, rotation 2, V3, rotation 3. So what, what's wrong with this one? So this one, if you look at element 1, this one, this is V2, rotation 2, V2, V2, rotation 2. You get 6L. You need this one. Correct. Then what about the, the second number here? If you combine the second one, V2. V2. And. V2 and rotation 2. V2 rotation 2 with this number, 6L. We put in there. Where, where got error? V2. Minus 6L. You understand why this one minus XL, this one plus 6L now? Yeah, because we have, I understand, I understand that minus six yeah. L plus L, yes. Yeah. So where we got error? Where, where where's the error? Katana, you know how to combine this individual element into a global matrix or not? Yes, you can. Ah. Then how come you 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 can still say that this one is wrong? No, no, it's correct. Uh, I just yeah. realized. Correct. I don't seem to find the, the error list. I, I don't. I do it myself, like one by one. Then I'm sure I can find it if there is an error. Okay. Both of you check check yeah. this four number. Which one is wrong? Uh. About uh, six for the rotation two. Uh, let me see. 
negative two L square. This one? Oh ah, yeah. Okay. What what's wrong? It, what what should it be? Uh should two L square. Not not negative. Okay. Right. The answer is correct. Katana, can you see the error? Yes, it's uh, on uh, rotation two. Mm. Uh, rotation two on uh, on V two. Uh, it's supposed to be minus six L plus six L. On on the fourth the fourth row. The fourth row. Mm. The fourth row on. Uh, uh, sorry, this the third row. The fourth column. This one. You are saying this one. Yes. Yes. Six L. So you are saying this one is wrong. It's supposed to be minus. Minus. You're saying 6L. this one wrong. Yes. Okay. So this is rotation two. This yes. this parking lot is rotation two. V two, correct? Yes. Let me erase all the notation. You're saying this one is wrong. So I write the notation again. Yeah, one. So this one is rotation two and uh, vertical displacement number two. So I write here. V. So rotation two, V two. Yes. This, this one. Minus. Okay. And two. rotation two, V two. And also this one more. Rotation one. Two. Okay. V two. Rotation two. V two six L. Okay. So this one is here. Yeah. So it, you need to check. Huh? So this one is negative. Minus. Yeah. So this one is positive. Yeah. So there are some typo error um, on my slides here. You need to check. Yeah. But the concept is there, yeah. Make sure you understand how to assemble this. This, uh. so one of the uh, error is here, yeah. Type error, and yeah. Just now, Katana found one more. It is uh, rotation two and V two. Rotation two, V two. It is negative six L. Correct. There's one more error here. Okay. Yeah. All right. So again, uh, go ahead. Yeah. So if we um, we apply the bounding condition, we can cancel, not cancel, uh, but we can uh, close the 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 row and column. So we know that number one here equal to zero because we, do, we, can, we don't have a vertical movement inside the wall. So we have zero. And then we have vertical also zero here. Then the second one in point number one here, we don't have rotation. So rotation number one also, you can close it. Uh, column number two also, you can close it. Yeah. Then point number three here cannot move uh, vertically, so you close number three here. Okay, close number three there. Okay. Then you again, uh, there's a type of error uh, over here. Yeah. Then you will see that uh, you will have. Uh, 
yeah, you have this one negative. So you have uh, 12 plus 12, you have 24. Uh, minus 6L plus 6L, you get 0. Then here, this one also 0. This one, 8L square. And then uh, 6L square, this one. <clears throat> and then type of error, this one type of error is a positive. And then you copy uh, 6L, put inside there, 2L square, 4L square. And then you have to know that all these location referring to V2, rotation 2, rotation 3. All these numbers are there. Okay, and then this one is your force at uh, point 2 Y direction. Moment at point number 2. And then moment at point number 3. So all these numbers, you have to know what all these numbers means. Huh? Um, okay, in SM, you don't need to, you can use your pencil to just to write beside, but don't use pen to write the green color notation. Yeah, this is just for your uh, reference, just for, just for when I teach you, just for your, to make you more clearer. All right, so when you, when you come to test, uh, don't write all this notation uh, for your answer. Yeah? If you want to write, use pencil to write just beside the, the answer. Uh, just to show that uh, you understand yeah? or to help you to further uh, clearer. Huh? Okay, so again, uh, um, you need to go home and solve. This one is uh, your, your homework as a practice. How do you solve three simultaneous equation in this case? Okay, there are three equation that you can get here. Uh, and then put your answer in term of EI over L. Uh, I mean, in, in, in your answer, put in term of E, I, and L. Your answer means V2 equal to something E, something I, something L. Okay. Uh, so solve these three equation. Okay. Uh, it will be better if you're able to show me two, two approach. One, you use expansion, uh, you, you solve by simultaneous equation. The second method you show me is that you show me that you know how to do matrix inverse or use matrix, uh, inverse matrix to solve this one. Okay, yeah, I explain. Uh, maybe uh, you're still not clear. So what, what does that mean? for your homework. First method, you use expansion. You expand. Then you solve with simultaneous equation. Okay. So what does it mean? It means you write three equation out from this matrix. I write the first one for you. 1000 equal EI over L3 L cube times. So 24. V2, get this one, time this one, this one, time this one, so get zero. Then this one, time this one, you get 6L plus 6L, rotation number three. You get the first equation, you do for the second one, do the third one, solve three equation. Second method, you do inverse matrix. So you have, you have matrix on the left, EI, over L cube, you have your matrix over here, and then you have your displacement. So what you do, this is your uh, this is your force equal to KD. What you do, you move your K over here, means that you inverse the the K. minus one equal to displacement. You solve the matrix from here. Okay, show me two ways in your homework. One is for simultaneous. Uh, it's more easier way uh, or more familiar way. Um, for this module, you need to practice how to do inverse matrix. So in coming test or exam, you will be instructed to use inverse matrix to solve uh, for the answer. Okay, so you have to 
know what is in a matrix. How to, when you move this whole matrix to the left, we have to go for the procedure for the inverse matrix. All right. So again, the homework is on Monday. Yeah? So we go for uh, one more example. So today we look at uh, one example. Um, so we are using a direct stiffener method uh, to solve the problems of uh, prop cantilever. And then um, we having a pin uh, load at the point number one. The beam is assumed to have a constant EI divided by 2L and the length is 2L, so it means that from point one to point three, we have two L here. So L1, uh, L is for element one. So we have element one and element two here. Okay. So support by a roller in the mid length and it's built uh, at the right end. Okay. So before we start, the first step is always label the element one and two, and then go for the point. Usually point will be given in the question. So one, two, three, and then uh, look at the external force. What is the direction? It's going down. So our axis will always use the standard one. If it's not given, draw yourself an uh, axis there. So X and Y. So all the force to X is positive. All the force in Y is positive. Okay. Now, all the point will have uh, displacement right we have v1 rotation 1 we have v2 rotation 2 we have v3 rotation 3 okay and then uh, okay so my question is my question is when we apply the boundary condition this is before we solve huh? at least in your mind you know what what is expected the boundary condition for this three point so my question is that which one should we put zero okay which one of these six uh, degree of freedom v1 rotation one v2 rotation two v3 rotation three which one should we put zero and explain why Okay, uh, okay, Katana, what is your answer? 3.3 because it's fixed. Which one? Which one? 0.3. Point 0.3? Three. Point three? Okay, because it's fixed, so uh, which one is zero? What parameter is zero? I think both parameters. Yeah, what, what, what's zero? V3 and the uh, uh, Rotation. Rotation. Okay. What is V3? The uh, displacement at 3. Okay, correct. So uh, before we, we, we solve, we look at the boundary condition or the constraint that we have. So point number 3, these two will be 0 because it's inside the wall. You're not able to move up, not able to rotate. Then, okay, Lai, what about number 2? Since Katana already, already answer for point 3, Lai, what is your answer for point two? Do you have value for V2 and rotation two or not? What do you think? I think uh, value. Correct. There's a value there yeah? because Point number two is able, still able to move up. Huh? So there's a value for V2. And is, is, if you look at this, this, this uh, pin here, it's able to rotate. So you still have value over here. Same with uh, point number one. Huh? Okay, very good, very good. Okay, let's, uh, I will show you very fast. And then you, you have a question, you stop me. Huh? So we will uh, end this lecture by looking at this example. So it will still repeat the same procedure like what we uh, discussed just now. So the first one, call the uh, element 
uh, stimulant matrix. So this this matrix, this K, is stand for one element. Yeah. So here we have two element. And the element, the L, the the the, the length is L. Yeah. The, when we apply this stiffness matrix, the element length is L. Yeah. Uh, so be careful. Um, okay. Then you put K element one. And K element two into this big matrix. And you can see here, yeah, just remind, yeah, um, we use small K for small element, for single element. And when we combine, uh, do, do remind yourself that we use capital K. Yeah? We change to capital K here. Huh? This is just a, a reminder for what you have learned in your chapter two and chapter three. Okay, so we use small letter for single element. We use capital letter when we combine the whole thing. All right. Now uh, I use the word symmetry here because uh, all the number here is repeated on the diagonal direction. So yeah. So if you know how to create formula with uh, PowerPoint, uh, it will take you some time to key in all this. So uh, for convenient, I will just write symmetry here. Okay, in in the uh, in your answer for exam, don't write symmetry. Yeah, you have to write the full uh, matrix here. So what mean by symmetry? I explain here on this on this slide again. This is your symmetry plane, uh, or or your mirror. You copy like for six L six L. Uh, negative 12, negative 12, six, minus 6L, six minus 6L, six 6L six and 6L. So it's like a mirror, yeah? So when you have a mirror case like that, we have a symmetry uh, matrix. That's why uh, this portion I empty out. It actually, it's the same like another side. Understand, yeah? Uh, katana and uh, line. Yes. Lie you okay? Eh? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, we move forward. Huh? Uh, a few more slides and then we end this lecture. So um, just for the side note, uh, we it's a good practice that you always write the location of all this number or notation for all this number. So uh, for inside matrix, we always look at point. So this Two two uh, column refer to point one. Uh, point one. These two number refer to point two. These two number, uh, these two uh, column refer to point three. So always remember that we are looking at v one rotation one, uh, v two rotation two, v three rotation three. Yeah. Don't mix up. Uh. Don't write v one, v two, v three rotation one. Rotation two, rotation three. Don't make these mistakes on matrix, yeah. So, uh, just remind yourself and make more practice. Huh? Uh, look at the case and then try to uh, understand it. Okay, yeah. This is all the reminder, lah. The reminder for your coming test or coming exam. All right, we move on. So I highlight on the screen here is refer to the first uh, element. So first element you have point one and point two. So you have a uh, 12, 6L until the 6L square. Then you combine the second element with a highlight with the uh, uh, lighter color. Uh, so you will see that uh, all the numbers mix up together. Yeah. Okay. So as you can see here, just now there's a typo error in the previous slides. Yeah. So there's minus six here and then there's a positive, positive sign for number okay so just just take note on that okay how do we solve so we just uh, pull the, the the equation by writing in f equal to kd capital f capital k and d and of course you have to put in the bracket huh? f is a curly 
k is a square bracket and displacement is curly also all right so um this equation in red color you should be familiar that we already explained it uh, just now so you combine the two elements you get this uh, very big uh, matrix yeah and then you try the next one is just to apply the boundary condition yeah the next step is to apply boundary condition so uh, v2 okay v2 is okay so v2 in this case uh, yeah it, actually this v2 can move up lah, okay can it can move up um, and then v3 and rotation 3 is 0 um, again uh, in in the real case v2 because if, if you press press on uh, point 1 it will become this shape right yeah so um, in this case we we put v2 as 0 it is because uh, if you press now, this one will will stick to pin. It will lay down on the on a pin. Okay, so there's no movement seen in point number two. Okay, line take note now. So on, on this on this uh, phenomena, if you press on uh, point one here, the body at element two here, it will stick to uh this uh, pin over here so if we stick to pin number here there's no movement okay there's no movement if the force is inverted then it will it will buckle up like that okay it will buckle up like that so the same case also uh we assume that because if you pull up uh, of course, of course, the one will go up, lah. Huh? So normally, for the force to go up, we will put one more uh, constraint over here, right? So just just uh, take note on 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 all these phenomena. By the way, uh, for this case, we will uh, we will make point two cannot move, yeah, cannot move uh, in the vertical direction. So we have a three boundary condition here. Point two, there's no movement in vertical direction. V3 is cannot move. Rotation also don't have. So we can uh, use your pencil to uh, close the uh, respective uh, row and column. So on point two, because uh, in this case, um, we assume or we expect that point number two is stick to the pin number here so there's no movement in vertical direction so we cancel not cancel we close row number two and then we have to when you close the row you have to close the column also so which one is the v2 column so uh, v1 rotation one v2 rotation two so we have to close this column okay uh, then you close the V3, yeah, also. Okay, so by this, on this slide here, you're only seeing a few number. You're seeing this number, this number, okay, this number, uh, this number, this number, and this number. You pull all the uh, green color bracket uh, or box number into a new matrix. Yeah. So in exam, you need to rewrite the matrix again. You will have this form. Okay. You're right. This is your F one Y M one M two, and then this one is your uh, remaining uh, matrix. Okay. Uh, just just for your hints or exam for 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 this module, usually you have three unknown. Yeah, usually you have three unknown. So um, 
So when you start to solve the question, the bounding condition there, you already can 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 expect which one is zero, which one is uh, not zero. Yeah. And then at the end, you will see something like that in your answer, which means you have three degree of freedom and then you solve the question. So uh, for the F1Y from the picture here, you know that a P is going down. So we have negative P for uh, F1Y. Okay, any question so far? Katana, Lai, any question? No. no. Okay, good, huh? Okay. But, uh, yes. The displacement are two. There was a point you said uh, if, uh, if enough force is pressed at one, the possibility. Yeah, I mean, in, in real case, uh, of course, there will be some uh, running over here. So if you press on point one, it will buckle, right? It will become this shape, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So um, if this length is long enough, this L long yeah. enough, this this point here will contact with the pin if you press down. So if you press down, there's no displacement. This point cannot oh. move, right? Ah, this one cannot move, move down, correct? If you press on point one. So if you look at point number two, there is no no movement because it stick to the pin there. The roller. All right. uh, it lay on the it, it just lay on the pin number two. So there is no movement there. You got it? Yes. Okay. All right. Um okay. Then we move on. So we solve this equation again. You are having three three equation here. Uh, and then um, this is a more direct case where you have a two zero here. So it help you to solve faster. Yeah. OK, so this is just a step. So you do the inverse matrix. Or you can use the uh, uh, yeah means you move your k from left to right. So what you do is that you take the force component times the inverse of your matrix, then you get the the answer for displacement. Okay, so this is the answer when you do the uh, mathematics. So I'll show you the final answer. Um, you can do as your extra homework to prove that your V1 equal to negative 7PL cubed divided by 12EI. All right, so this is just a, a checkpoint for you uh, uh, to see if you understand how to use or how to solve this three equation. And what is important on this slide is, is the negative sign. Okay, if you get a positive, it means something. If you ne get a negative, it means something. So if you get a negative, it means that V1, V1 is going downward. Because all our direction we labeled just now, X is to the left, positive. Y is moving up, positive. So if you get something positive, it means it's going up. If you get something negative, it means going down. Okay, it means that uh, displacement at point one is going down, which is uh, logic and reasonable. Because if you put, if you put a force at point one, this displacement sure will go down in a normal condition. So you get a negative there. Okay, so this is also in exam. Um, you can, from your answer, you can self-check also whether it's logic or not. In exam, if you get a positive, means something wrong with your calculation because if you push this one down, the object will not go up. Uh, the this point will not go up one. It will go down. So you'll get a negative answer for that. Try to have a self-diagnostic scale uh, on the answer. Yeah. And for the rotation, angle or slope, you get a positive. 
Okay, what mean by positive uh, line? What is the direction if you get a positive sign? What is the uh, direction of the rotation? If you get if you get a positive for rotation, uh, for this number for rotation, the the direction will be same as the moment. So what is the direction? If you get positive moment, what is the direction? Right. What is the answer? Uh, right direction. Right direction. How your moment or how your rotation uh, your rotation move to the left or right only? Uh? How you uh, rotate? You rotate with the angle, right? Or with oh. it is either clockwise or anti-clockwise, right? Uh, and, and, anti -clockwise. Ah, so uh, so for moment and rotation, angle or slope, uh, if you get a positive, it's an anti-clockwise direction. So if you in your answer you get positive. Uh, you need to tell or you need to write somewhere in your answer rotation is anti-clockwise. Okay. Yeah. So in your answer, in your in your answer in test or exam, uh, there will be a small portion that asks you to explain your answer. Okay. Explain, it will ask you to explain the direction of your displacement, explain the direction of your rotation or your slope. Okay. Uh, so Again, uh, so if you solve the three equation here, uh, rotation number two or slope at number two, you get a positive. So it means that the right, the right, the direction is anticlockwise. Uh, okay. So in it, for test, you have to write all these uh, a small note beside the answer. Then you get marks there. Okay. So these are just a bonus mark to help you to score. Uh. So it's very easy to, to score for uh, this module. You only need to know the, the way or the strategy to, to solve the question, right? We are trying to evaluate you based on your understanding. Do you understand what you are calculating? Do you understand what concept to use? Do you understand what is bounding condition? Do you understand what is positive, what is negative in the answer? Uh, do you understand to do uh, inverse matrix or do you know how to solve a simultaneous equation? Yeah, so all these things, all these are skill that uh, will give you some marks. Then after that, after we done the displacement, yeah, after we done the, the three displacement there, we put back into our global matrix there, all right? Remember, you still have uh, a few unknown to solve. Yeah. So you have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You have 6 unknown on the left, 6 unknown on the right. So you just solve 3 and then there's a displacement just now. So you have uh, six, 6 already solved. So you put back the, the answer just now. You replace your V1 answer, rotation answer, uh, and your rotation number two answer. Then this one is zero just now, the boundary condition. Zero. This one also zero. So you have solved for the displacement already. So what about the, the, the F component? So you need to solve for F component. Okay. So F1Y again is one negative P, it is going down. Moment at point number one, you will get zero. If you do the substitution of the answer, eh? if you do the expansion for the answer, means that you put 6L times this one, plus this one times this one, plus this one times zero, plus this one times this one, plus this one times this one, plus this one times this one. You will get M1 equal zero, okay? Actually, you have six equation here, so you have to know how to expand it. Then you will see the, the mathematics model, yeah? Then F2Y, you will get five over two P. Moment two will be zero. Force at point number three will be negative 
3 over 2 P and M3 will be half PL. Okay, I already skip the mathematics detail calculation. Yeah, so in exam, you have to show all these uh, steps, yeah, all the mathematics steps. Uh, same with your homework uh, that I asked you to do. Yeah, show me the steps. Yeah, um, okay, so this is just a checkpoint for you so that you know uh, whether you're in the correct uh, uh, direction or not. Okay, uh, any questions so far? Any question? Lai, Katana, any question? Anything that you don't understand? Anything that seems very weird on the screen? That you're not able to relate? Okay. Okay, yeah, Katana, you're right, yeah? Yeah. Okay, good, excellent. Lai, you okay, Lai? Yeah, okay. Okay, good, excellent. Um, okay, then the next one is will be I go a little bit more. Can I, both of you? I go a little bit more, then we end the lecture. Can I? Okay, okay. So uh, once we determine the 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 global forces, which is on the left hand side of the matrix, then we will go into the individual element. So individual element, we look at element one. We copy the not copy, but we we write the, the stiffness matrix again. So again, we change the capital F to small f here yeah? when you look at element uh, dimension. So we change it to small f, f one y, m one y, f two y, and m two. So don't confuse with the capital F. This one. Don't confuse with the capital F and capital M with a small f and small m. When we just now what we look is at the global scale or uh, outside the big picture. Now we look at individual element. So when you look uh, right individual element, use all the, the small uh, alphabet letter over here. All right. So the displacement we will we will also write in this form. So f equal to kd. Uh, all the all the number inside this matrix is standard already, and again, uh, when should we use this uh, all this number when you have an element with L, and we have all the displacement like what we seen in the photo that I show you. Huh? Then you put in all the all the known value that you found just now, the displacement value you found. Uh, rotation or angle or gradient, then uh, V two, V two we 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 don't have we need to find the V two, yeah we need to find the V two. Okay. Okay, solving. Okay, just now because you have uh, all the all the force. Okay, when you solve this equation, you will get uh, f one y equal to p minus p m equal to zero. F two y equal to p. Yeah. Um, in this case, v two is zero. Yeah. This one is zero. V two is zero. Like uh, we follow our boundary condition just now. So when you solve this equation, you get uh, all this number. You get all this number, yeah. F one y, m one y, f two y, and m two. In the p and l term. Then after that, you need to know how to draw the free body diagram. So, um, by having all the numbers here, you convert into free body diagram. So element one and element two, you just uh, follow the answer that you get. So how you draw the first one, I'll show you. Uh. So you draw element one with the L. Then you look at your answer. 
So for element one, you get negative p, small f, yeah? In your, in your solution just now, you get minus p. Minus p, it means it's going down. And then F2y, which is here, 0 0.2, uh, 0.1 and 0 0.2. 0 0.2 here, you get P is going up. And then there's no moment in 0.1, so that you don't need to draw moment. In 0.2, you get a negative sign for your moment. Again, positive is anti-clockwise. You get negative it clockwise. So you get a clockwise moment in 0.2, and the value is minus PL. Or or PL. The, the magnitude is PL. Okay. Uh, be careful when you do conversion. Yeah. Uh, negative PL, it means the direction is clockwise. So the magnitude is PL. So be careful on when you draw it. Huh? Yeah. Don't don't you flip the direction already, then you write negative, then it's wrong. Clear, huh? uh, lie and katana. Okay, yeah. So if you don't want to change the direction, what you do in point two, if you want to copy negative there, you just uh, put the normal anti-clockwise direction for a moment, then you write PL, negative PL, then correct. This answer is correct. Uh, if, you, if you want to correct the direction, remember to remove the negative sign. If you already correct the direction, then use the magnitude only. Clear, Katana, and line? Yes, sir. Okay, good. You do the same for element two, right? You do the same for element two. So um, you, you just put in all the answer there. Okay. Um, okay, I think I will stop. Uh, the lecture over here. I will come back to this uh, explanation on the free body diagram. Yeah, I will make uh, more more detailed explanation in next lecture. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. So today your homework is to go and solve uh, to solve this one. Yeah. Let me flip back. Go home and solve this equation and then pass up the homework uh, by Monday class, okay? By Monday class, so you have three to four days to solve for this three equation. And then uh, have a look in what, what we go through today. Um, see any area that you're not clear and then come back and ask me on Monday. Okay, we, uh, let me end the recording.